what's going on? It's Ethan with HustlePaintball.com. Now, if you've watched any of our videos or followed our channel for any length of time, you've probably figured out that we're really into high-end pumps and mechanicals. We really enjoy that type of play. Pump and mech play has been all the rage for the last couple years. And whether it started out with people just wanting to slow down or take more pride in their marksmanship and accuracy, or maybe just wanting to save money on paint, people are starting to realize that pump and mech play is super fun. The problem is, a lot of times if you go pump or mech, you have to go with older markers. Technology isn't always there. So whenever we get the chance to check out a modern pump or mechanical marker, we're pretty psyched. Empire took the autococker platform and fixed all the issues they could while still allowing it to remain an autococker. Introducing the Empire Resurrection. Let's go over some of the more obvious features of the gun. Now, Empire included a low profile clamping feed neck. It's got a knurled thumb screw and a brass insert for the lever. This is really slick because when you clamp down on your loader, that brass insert is going to resist galling, it's going to last, you're not going to have to worry about little metal shavings coming off and compromising the quality of that feed neck. It's got right and left detents, a six piece barrel kit, which is an absolute necessity for any closed bolt marker, inline regulator with a swivel collar down at the bottom, inline macro line, so it doesn't matter if you're a righty or lefty or just switching hands, it's going to be comfy to shoot either way on-off ASA that does in fact purge. I don't know why there are some on-off ASAs out there that don't purge, but this one does, and that's awesome. And then finally, a single slide trigger 45 style frame with Hogue style grips. Some of the uh, less obvious features, got a nice lightweight Delrin bolt, solder cocker is mid-blocked, and there's a slot blocker integrated into the sled. The sear inside is a two-stage roller sear. Combined with the trigger setup, it results in a very snappy, crisp trigger pull, makes it almost impossible to short stroke. That's a huge deal, because autocarcasses of the past definitely had that issue. If you didn't know how to properly shoot your gun, chances are you were gonna short stroke, break some paint, you're gonna have a bad time. Adjustable LPR, externally adjustable three-way, and my favorite feature of the entire gun is that you can remove the valve with no valve tool. Now, if you're asking yourself, what the heck is a valve tool and why is that important? Consider yourself lucky. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know it was a pain in the butt to be at the field, have a valve o-ring slip or some sort of issue like that, and be, I can't fix my gun unless I have this stupid valve tool. Well now, all you need is an Allen wrench. That, like I said, is my absolute favorite feature of the Resurrection. I wanna take it apart, show you all the different features, and we're gonna go and shoot it. Let's start with what comes in the box. Of course, your gun, six-piece barrel kit, parts kit with spares, DVD manual, printed quick start guide, and a barrel cover. But you've seen one barrel cover, you've seen them all, so don't need to see this one. Now, this is a good opportunity for me to go over some of our gripes. We don't have a whole lot, which is actually really exciting, but gripe on. So the on-off ASA, like I said, is very smooth, very easy, it purges. I actually like it quite a bit. The one thing that was pointed out was when the on-off lever is in the off position like this, you could be walking, you could brush on your clothing, and you could potentially air up the gun. Uh, you know, it's a thing, whatever. The barrel kit. Six piece barrel kit, comes with the gun. It was pointed out to me that most guys who have an interest in a gun like this probably have owned a closed bolt marker in the past, probably have their own barrel kit that they maybe like a little bit more, probably don't need this kit, but not everyone does. And the fact of the matter remains, if you buy this and you've got, let's say, a deadly wind fiber or pathogen meteor barrel that you like more, well, sell this kit. It's a pretty solid kit. It will fit most of the modern paintball guns out there that have proper threading, autococker that is, and you know, you've made some of your money back. I think that's a bonus. What I don't think is a bonus is the 695 and the 675 backs of this kit. I believe that Empire tried to make kind of an end-all be-all kit, but with only five backs, there's only so much you can do. So trying to cover the entire range of potential paintball sizes from 675 to 695, you're missing out. You got a lot of gaps. Those are big intervals. I think they should have covered 679 to 689 much more thoroughly. You would have had uh, two or maybe three thousandths of an inch between each back with five backs instead of trying to cover, well, a much larger range. Most of the common paint, at least that I use, is smack dab in the middle of 680 and 685. So this kit for me wouldn't be the best thing, but it is what it is. Once again, if there's a barrel kit you like more, buy that one. Parts kit at first glance looks a little spare, but that's really just because the kit itself, the box itself, is just kind of big. 
but that's a bonus. You can put tools in there, extra macro, extra pneumatic hosing, O-rings, whatever it is. I think that's a bonus. The kit itself is actually pretty complete. Don't be surprised the first time you uh, open up your grease container, but let's be honest, you shouldn't really be relying on the factory supplied, supplied lubricants. You should instead rely on something proper like pathogen super grease. Get a lot of it. Come on, you know how much we love this stuff. DVD manual, I'm always gonna gripe on that because Every time I'm out at the field, I generally don't have my laptop with me. So if I'm having any sort of troubleshooting that I need to do, this DVD is less than useless to me. The reason it's not just useless is because it mocks me, it taunts me. All the information is there and I can't access it. However, at home, this is actually pretty awesome. I wish they would include both. But once again, it is what it is. The printed quick start manual um, is not terrible in fact but it's just a quick start manual. It's not really good for extended troubleshooting and issues you might have at the field. Finally, while I do like the box that it comes in, it's very well padded. You can separate your barrel kit out and put all your parts in there and it would actually hold up pretty well. There's one phrase on there which drives me nuts and that is closed bolt system for extreme accuracy. Empire, I'm sorry, but would you please stop spreading that inane myth that closed bolt markers are inherently more accurate than open bolt markers? I mean, I thought that died years ago, but apparently not. Everyone who's watching this, it's not true. Your accuracy comes from your paint, first and foremost, your regulator, which leads to consistency, your barrel and barrel kit, and that's pretty much it. A closed bolt system is not inherently more accurate than an open bolt system. I've said it, let the hate continue. When I show you some of the internals of the gun, we'll cover some of your basic maintenance. Now, of course, you always want to clean off your bolt after every day of play. What's included is a light, high-flow Delrin bolt. It's got O-rings behind and in front of the inlet hole and an O-ring on the front. Looks like there's going to be pretty good sealing. You know, I'm sure there could be a better bolt, but this stock bolt is definitely pretty freaking solid. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using grease to lubricate it. I would use instead a lightweight oil. The reason being is while grease will lubricate it just fine, grease has a tendency to capture dirt and dust a little bit better than oil, which is not something you want to do. So it is what it is. You'll just end up having to clean your bolt a little bit more frequently if you decide to grease it. Now I did mention before that it's a mid-block cocker with an integrated slot blocker. That's this black piece right here. Now if you look up, look down in the lower tube, you can see actually the hammer right there. Imagine this slot blocker not being there. You would still be able to see the hammer right now when the bolt is in a closed position. So imagine getting shot there, having paint go into your lower tube. Well, I can tell you from personal experience, if that happens, you are not playing, at least consistently at least, until your bottom tube is completely cleaned out. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Therefore, slot blockers are awesome. Thank you for including that empire. That is, once again, awesome. Flip, on, flip open your grip panels, and there are two internal set screws which hold your on-off ASA in place. Now, there is an argument to be made that internal set screws are kind of a pain in the butt. Just to rotate them, you gotta get your Allen wrench in there, do like, quarter of a turns every single time and I get that it's kind of a pain fortunately you don't have to do it too often and the thing is it does make for nice smooth lines no exposed holes on the bottom of the ASA um, what I do like about this unquestionably is that what's integrated into the grip itself uh, the grip frame itself is a t-rail so if you don't like this ASA if it breaks or you don't like this ASA or whatever or if you don't like this ASA you can throw on something else with a T-rail. And Eclipse Pops or Oops will fit on there just fine. Um, and the one benefit as well to these internal set screws is that if you want to remove this completely and put in uh, an ASA that's got inline hole patterns, those will thread directly in to those, um, those holes right there. So you've got a lot of options. This is actually a very versatile and intelligently built grip frame. Nice job. Moving on to the regulator. I've removed the macro line just to make it easier. Unscrews, very simple. And I dig this reg because it's toolless disassembly. Thread off the bottom cap. There are even wrench flats on the bottom here so that in case some gorilla tightens down your reg, you can still get at it with, you know, tools. Slide off the collar. Normally, internally glanded O-rings like this are a pain in the butt to check, maintain, replace, but with a collar like this, it's kind of the name of the game. That's just how it goes. And these would be pretty simple to get out, 
maintain, replace. So if you're having a leak from the collar, replace or uh, lubricate one of these O-rings, problem solved. Moving on to the rest of the reg, this top separates from the bottom. Once again, without tools, there's your piston in there and move the gun out of the way. Now, depending on how well that's seated in there, you may need to bang on it pretty hard. And here you've got your piston and your spring pack. If you've never seen a regulator internals with Belleville springs, well, the fact is they're just superior to traditional coiled springs. Each one of these concave discs needs to be correctly oriented, and I imagine there's a handy little graphic coming up. It's much better than me trying to show you with my clumsy fingers, but it's important to make sure these are properly oriented on your uh, piston, otherwise the rig will not work properly. As with any maintenance of any rig, wipe down the old grease, any grime or dirt, put it back together after re-greasing and you're good to go. Now, when you drop that piston back in the regulator body, it may be kind of uh, out of whack. Drop a uh, Allen wrench down the middle, get everything lined up, and it will push all the way down and you can reassemble the regulator. Moving up to the front block, we've got an externally adjustable LPR or low pressure regulator. What that means is don't touch this adjustment knob unless you know what you're doing. We'll cover that in our timing video, but for the most part, you don't need to touch this. So don't. We do have an externally adjustable three-way, and while you also don't need to touch this, I'm gonna show you why it's awesome. Let's first start by taking off the trigger frame. Two screws, one in the front, one in the back. You do have to pull the trigger and hold it to get full access to the front screw. And when you take off your trigger frame, take care not to bend your timing rod. You pull out your three-way, now, when it comes to timing your autococker, you may have to adjust your three-way, you adjust your timing. That's why this is called a timing rod. This three-way collar right here is secured onto the threads with the help of two set screws. In the olden days, if you did not have an externally adjustable three-way, you had to loosen these. And while the three-way was still in place, three-way rod was still in place, the trigger was all there, you have the three-way collar loosened, and you kind of have to get your fingers in there and shimmy it, and you have to move it up and down the timing rod. As you can imagine, or in the case right now where it's a little greasy, your fingers are a little greasy, it was a titanic pain in the butt. What's cool about this is that you can use an Allen wrench, and you can twist the three-way rod, even when it's installed in the three-way. So, externally adjustable, Imagine this collar being loose, this timing rod staying in place. You would be able to slide uh, and adjust the three-way rod itself up and down the timing collar very easily. You still do have to loosen these set screws, of course, because that's what holds it in place. But this one is obviously uh, externally adjustable right there. If you look on the other side, Empire took the courtesy of milling out that vertical adapter so you can get to the other one without having to take everything apart. That makes timing this cocker much, much easier. Other than that, we have to cover the lower tube kit. To remove the valve, we need to take everything out of the lower tube, starting with the IVG, or internal velocity governor. Now, my advice is whenever you're removing the IVG or the hammer, you're gonna to wanna to count how many rotations out it is. This will make putting your gun back together much easier. One, two, three, four, five, five, maybe five and a half. I like this IVG because there's quite a few lines of threads. A traditional IVG only has maybe two or three lines of threading. This is just gonna be much smoother. Uh, it's not gonna bind up or anything like that. I think they did a good job with this. It's also milled out, very lightweight. Your mainspring. Now, for those of you who are familiar with an autococker style design, this is gonna be old news to you. But those of you who are not, this is gonna be uh, somewhat important. I can't just dump out the hammer like that. Maybe a little bit tough to see, but the hammer has an adjustable lug that fits in the slot right here. That is what your sear catches on. The thing is, like I said, it's captured, it's impacting the body right now. So what you'll need to do is raise that lug um, so that you can dump out the hammer. In order to do that, we're gonna need to move the slot blocker out of the way. And down in the hammer, there's going to be a, uh, well, the adjustment screw right there. It is gonna be a nylon, uh, 
uh, it's going to be encased in nylon, so it's going to be somewhat tough. This is a good thing, and that is what allows your lug to be securely fastened. It will not move around with vibration, but it does make it a little bit challenging to get out, especially when the gun's new. Once again, count your rotations, typically about three and a half rotations to get that um, raise, raised out of the way. Like I said, it's a little tough. One, two, we're gonna hope for three, because this is killing my fingers. And nope, we're still gonna have to keep going. Three and a half. There we go. Now you have a better view. This is your hammer. The lug would drop um, below the level of the hammer right here. That's your adjustment screw right there. Um, when you lubricate this, uh, you can use some light oil. Some people recommend just keeping it nice and spotless. I find that light oil is a good way to go. Once again, though, you'll have to service it more frequently as oil and grease do capture some dust and dirt. Moving on to the valve. In the past, you would need a valve tool to get at the valve. Not so with the resurrection. All you need to do is loosen this valve retaining screw right here. That's brass, high quality, nice and smooth. Definitely a nice touch. Pull that out. There's gonna be some spring tension on the valve itself. So you may want to gently push in on the valve and that will le release the tension. Then the spring tension is going to push the valve out of the way just slightly. Use, um, you know, you can gently use an Allen, Allen key or something soft um, to coax the valve out the, edge, the, the rest of the way. Now that I've got the valve out, I just want to show you that it is symmetrical top to bottom. doesn't matter which way you put it in. However, you can put it in backwards. The proper way to put this valve in is with the raised side toward the front. That's what your cup seal sits against. Valve is pretty straightforward. Looks like a pretty solid design. Uh, if there's any damage to these O-rings, of course you'll hear leaks. You can take out the valve periodically, wipe down any of the old grease and grime, re-lubricate it. Lube is just fine here since it's not technically a moving part, and it'll be just fine. To reinstall it, simply line up the holes on the bottom of the body, push it all back in place. Remember, since this is going to be under tension, you're gonna to wanna to push the valve into place and hold it while you tighten it down. Reassemble, and remember all the counts you did earlier. So when you are, for instance, adjusting your lug, well, you know that it was about three and a half turns to get the lug lowered into place. And for the IVG, at least in my case, it was about five turns. So we're gonna go ahead and get this gun put back together and head outside for an efficiency test. Efficiency test time, our favorite time. In fact, especially when we're doing mechanical or pump marker. And in this case, you'll notice that the gauge is right in the way of my hand. So I'm gonna be doing this whole thing lefty. It's for you guys, I hope you appreciate this. So where are we at? 4504, 4504 PSI. We've got a thousand balls in here and we got plenty of paint on hand. Start by chronoing it. Cool, we had one spike over 300, everything else was about 285 to 295. Shall we begin? Whew. Time to trade out. Tag in. <laughs> All right, that was 270 feet per second. We're at 208 PSI. I've been measuring it very carefully since 250 PSI and it's just barely starting to creep down. This is fantastic. Yep, still bouncing between about 260 and 280. We're at 192 PSI. Okay, we're starting to drop down below 240.
Okay, you got 235, 234 at 162 PSI. We're at about 230 PSI. The loader's empty. At 152 PSI, I'd say that's pretty damn good. 1800 rounds? Had a blast playing with it on Saturday, which isn't really that surprising considering all the features that it comes with, the feedback we've been getting from people who either picked it up already or some of the guys around the office who'd snuck it away and played with it or just shot it out in the back. I'm absolutely not surprised how much fun this gun was. Now, I think it's fantastic value as well, considering the price point that most mechanical cockers of this level were at, you know, a couple years ago. Yes, technology increases and that generally brings the cost down but they could have made it more expensive, they didn't, and they included a barrel kit. I think that's fantastic. Even if you do already have a barrel kit, well, sell the kit that it comes with, lower your overall cost, win-win, like I said. Now, you can pick up the black or the gray, all sorts of other cool things at hustlepaintball.com. Email us at videos at hustlepaintball.com if you have any questions or suggestions for other videos. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Definitely appreciate the support. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and read our blog. Finally, go to pbriot.com, join the forum there, talk with me, Jay, everyone else there. We've got some exciting news coming up soon, so stay tuned. Thanks again, guys. First, they included a nice low rise clamping feed neck. Does have a knurled finger screw, finger, thumb screw. You do it, you have to tighten it with your thumb only. only thumb. You can't use these.